second part of our civil design solutions for roads uh, project webinar. I am Maylin Lee Kabalan, Success Manager for Civil Solutions in Southeast Asia. I'm currently based in Singapore. So in the first session yesterday, if some of you who have attended, I have uh, introduced Open Roads Concept Station as uh, one of the best uh, solutions or tools in order for you to create conceptual model of your road or highways projects. Today, we will now focus on the detailed design aspect of the overall uh, civil design workflow with an emphasis on how you can better create an information model using Open Roads and Open Site Designer. Here is our agenda for this uh, session. Uh, we'll probably go through uh, some some uh, BIM 101 <laughs> uh, a little, okay, and how is it important to uh, civil design as well as civil designers. And uh, again, uh, a little introduction on the Bentley digital workflow for civil or infrastructure projects. And then how can you achieve uh, an information model by using open roads as well as open site design. And then later on, we'll be uh, discussing uh, what are those uh, common BIM deliverables that you can uh, create from the solutions that we will discuss, as well as how you can coordinate within your civil design team. And of course, uh, we'll go through some of your questions uh, uh, before, we come, uh, we, before we end the session. Before we dig deeper on the civil design tools of Bentley, so let's just uh, first get a clearer picture as to what BIM is or building information model. So you've probably been hearing about this or you've probably been using some tools that allows you to deliver BIM, okay? But uh, probably some maybe up until now are still uncertain to what 3D it is. Is it, a, uh, is it plain and simple 3D model? Or is it a software? This, I guess, is what most of us in the industry thinks. With my years of experience in the engineering software field, I usually meet people or users who ask me if Bentley sells a BIM software. So from there, I would uh, stall a little bit and explain that we are not uh, a BIM uh, software vendor or developer, developer, but we have engineering solutions that can help you with your BIM deliverables. Now, this is one of the common uh, uh, misconceptions. So they would only attribute BIM with buildings. Okay, but when in fact, when we talk about road projects or rail projects, uh, these are all considered as linear projects. So we don't talk about uh, floors, okay, or grid-based type of design, but uh, we now talk about uh, a more linear or continuous type of modeling, wherein everything are referenced by chainage or station. Or is it a process? Well, maybe it is, but these, but there should be, uh, or are there any rules set by any organizations or authority to make sure that this process is properly followed and implemented? How about your data, your files? Do we set a common data format in order to make sure that design is optimized and can be shared to other stakeholders? Or make sure that despite uh, disparate data formats in a project, do you leverage on connected data environment enablers in order to make sure that your data are used no matter what vendor or format you uh, are using? Or some of you may, may say that it involves 4D, which actually takes into consideration the time element 
in your project. Or is it about cost, okay, where we attribute it as uh, 5D? Or is it about us, okay, the users or the, the designers, okay, the people who ultimately decides what and how to utilize the previous concepts that I have mentioned earlier and probably work as a team in order to meet their project or our project deliverables. Well, actually, okay, all those concepts and terminologies I've mentioned is actually uh, what BIM is all about. It is a collaboration through digitalization and it uses a shared digital representation of a built asset to facilitate your design, construction, as well as operation processes to generate a reliable basis for informed decision. And we don't just deal on design per se. So I've mentioned that it facilitates uh, through design, construction, and operation processes. So again, it is not just about the 3D model that you create, okay? It is also about the information that is embedded in the digital or built asset that you create. And later on, I will introduce you to the concept of digital twin which is eventually what we are creating, but making sure that this is taken through the entire asset life cycle, meaning not only at the design phase, which probably what most of us still have in mind. So the main objective of BIM, okay, or adapting a BIM workflow is to make sure data across the project phases will be more efficient. Despite such well-defined objective, we are still seeing disjointed workflows which poses data loss or creation or recreation or maybe remodeling of data across project phases. As you can see in the, in the graph here, okay, so uh, those in circles, basically represents uh, data loss, okay, or remodeling, okay, of our data as we pass on our model or our deliverables to the next phases. And this is where, okay, we see greatest the greatest opportunity to improve the industry, okay, and lay out solutions in order to augment this inefficient workflow. And we should aim to make an effort to make sure that data, information, and knowledge seamlessly flow by creating a 3D digital data okay, that closely aligns the objectives of all parties involved and making sure that there is a better information flowing from across the asset lifecycle, thereby increasing understanding of the design and project deliverables. And of course, okay, following local or global standards mandated by uh, authorities or uh, organizations, like for instance, the ISO 19650, which basically helps designers, uh, including contractors, to collaborate efficiently in all phases of the project. As a civil designer, okay, what is now your role in effective implementation of BIM in your organization? This could be high time for all of us to refocus on the tools as well as the workflows we are using. We need to make sure that we understand the deliverables and how much work is needed, what standards needs to be followed, 
Do we just focus on delivering 2D sheets or create 3D model, then derive the 2D sheets from it? Or yes, we have the 3D model, but what information are embedded in the 3D model? Does it contain relevant attributes in order to address the required level of detail of the project? So these are the things we need to think of. Bentley Systems might have the, the software, but how much data can be delivered from the model created is more important than the software itself. So this is why okay, we at Bentley Systems make sure that civil designers has the or have the most complete solutions uh, with effective as well as seamless workflows in order to deliver better information model. And I've shown you this uh, slide yesterday for some of you who have missed it, okay. Uh, it just depicts that in a certain uh, infrastructure project, many disciplines are actually involved. And looking at an overall picture where other disciplines need to collaborate to your civil design, so uh, as I've mentioned okay, uh, yesterday, and I'm reiterating today, you will, might be starting from a survey data, regardless of what format it is. And then you go through conceptual design, and of course your detailed design by, by probably using uh, the open civil designer softwares of Venti Systems. And then uh, you'd be probably collaborating with building data as well, okay? And then apart from that, okay, you would be using maybe uh, a geotechnical data, okay, in order for you to, to decide if your alignment, okay, direction is optimized such that the, the soil material uh, along that alignment is appropriate, okay? And then we also have some geostructural tools or analysis tools that will la let you uh, compute, okay, or analyze if, if the structural uh, component of the, the soil is, is correct. And of course, uh, uh, since we have integrated building models, we also have a, a structural as well as detailing analysis tool to facilitate that. And then, uh, Maybe visualization is also needed, okay? And then your, your 4D simulation by using our synchro tools. And then all these uh, output will be sitting in what we call uh, an iTwin or iModel hub, okay? For you to do your review as well as getting uh, important insights, okay? And what facilitates all this is basically your connected data environment Okay, which would be uh, the single source of truth of every data that you have. And we will discuss more on this connected data environment on the part three of our uh, webinar series. So let's just focus first on the civil design aspect okay, of our project. Now, focusing on the road and site civil design aspect, here is our recommended solution, okay? I've mentioned yesterday the difference of the concept station uh, application as well as this, this designer, okay? So we'll be focusing on the designer solution, okay? Specifically, open site designer and then open roads designer. Now, we also have another solution that caters for the rail projects, but basically based on this diagram here, it shows you that if you have open rail designer, you also have the functionality of open roads designer, and then, of course, the open site designer. So basically, open roads designer has open site, okay? But I, I will go through uh, more details on this later on. So Open Roads Designer is a comprehensive and fully functional uh, detailed design application uh, that would allow you to 
to create or do surveying, okay? Even drainage or utilities underground uh, allows you to create a corridor or roadway design, okay? And um, uh, geo integrate your geotechnical data as well, okay? And of course, uh, many optimized tool that will allow you to create uh, corridor models as well as site models and of course, uh, create visualization or design time visualization from it. Now, in addition to this are the site design capabilities, okay? But uh, of course, if you only have open site designer, so this is what you will, you will get. Modeling of parking lots, uh, building pads, driveways, and also creating those general site conditions for your cut or your fill, okay? And then optimize this into a grading or earthwork grading calculation. If your project entails for you to do some uh, residential type of parceling, we also have that tool inside uh, uh, Open Site Designer. And then of course, uh, your quantities or your volumes, okay? Now, emphasizing on the civil design, okay, per se, regardless of you using open roads or open site, okay, this is the typical journey you will go through as designers. So from survey data, okay, which you process to become terrain data, then probably you'll be going straight to site design, okay, or, or maybe uh, create First, your geometries, okay, derived from the site, okay, that you have, uh, or derived from the terrain model that you have created, okay, and uh, from it, you'll be creating your corridor models, okay, and from your site as well as your corridor, come up with volume or quantities, okay, from those uh, information model that you have created. Then once you have these models, okay, uh, you'd be getting some, uh, or or extracting some information from it by maybe uh, uh, getting or making sure that the site visibility of uh, when you're driving a car, if the, the road uh, follows a certain site visibility uh, rule, okay, in your country or your local uh, your locality, then we also have the aqua planning tool, uh, which, which you can use in order to make sure that uh, your road or your site will not be prone to ponding, okay? And then, of course, uh, you cannot isolate creating drainage and utilities with a corridor or a site model, okay? So that's why within uh, open roads as well as open site designer, you have this capability as well. And, of course, a hydraulic calculation. If you need to, to compute for the storm, drainage, uh, hydraulic capacity of your... Uh, uh, storm water network, okay, so we have that tool as well. And then, of course, generating reports, okay, and uh, sheets, okay, is one or uh, is, is one of the byproduct or one of the many byproducts of uh, the civil designer tool of uh, Bentley System, okay. And then, of course, for you to do collaboration, okay, uh, we have some design review tools, which I will discuss later on as well, uh, that is uh, cloud-based, okay, uh, facilitated by our uh, iModel Hub, okay. Then anytime you wish to do your visualization, we have the Luminarity uh, uh, package, okay, included inside Open Roads as well as Open Site Designer. Now, I have mentioned about connected data environment earlier, okay? Uh, when we say connected data environment, it enables you, okay, as designers or even owners or app operators to access, okay, uh, files or access your data in a centralized repository that will allow members of the team to access the same data all throughout, okay? 
So this will be your single source of truth no matter what step you're in in your detailed design workflow. Now, in this slide here, you, you, you saw the word federated, okay? So this just means that you don't put everything or any design that you create in just one file, okay? And this is what we usually refer to as organizing your data in a federated manner. Working in a federated environment does not need to be complicated. So with Open Roads as well as Open Site Designer, it is just uh, it is as simple as referencing your files, or maybe some of you would know it as XREF. Okay, so on some of the demonstrations that I will show later on, you will notice that we will be starting from an empty or a blank file, and then using this connected data environment, we reference okay, uh, a terrain, or maybe a site model, or maybe a, a corridor model, or even the geometry, okay, and then put it, okay, reference this in our main file okay so this process is basically called federating your files okay so as to optimize the file size as well as your workflow and this actually facilitates okay this actually facilitates a, the multi environment okay multi user environment that a, a typical okay uh, infrastructure project okay is is actually exposed to okay uh, no matter I, I think some of you okay who are doing infrastructure project would would attest to what i'm saying here that you're you are not really limited uh, you are not confined to to, to doing everything okay especially those uh, big consulting firms were in uh one Team member is is doing uh, alignment. One is doing survey, and then he will pass it on to the the file to the to the uh, terrain or surface uh, modeler. Okay, and then so on and so forth. Okay, now to to facilitate this kind of workflow. Okay, so we we always uh, tell our user to federate your files and then store it. Okay, in a connected data environment uh, repository, okay? That's one of the best practice that we can, uh, uh, I mean, uh, suggest, okay? In order for you to, to make sure that the information model is is uh, moving or or uh, the workflow is, is moving uh, seamlessly. Now, taking into consideration the federation of the files, where do we actually start, okay? In a linear project or a civil design project, okay, we have to make sure that everything goes to the right location, okay, or position. Uh, we have to consider the X, Y, Z, or the northing, easting elevation all the time, okay, and that will be facilitated, okay, by the geo coordination tool of open roads as well as open site okay by making sure that you assign the coordinate system initially uh, as you design it now how does it uh, how is this done so you create an empty file okay reference the terrain or reference the survey file okay and from there, make sure you assign the right coordinate system, okay? Now, if data, okay, are, are lacking, okay, in some areas, we have the geo-coordination tool that will allow you to maybe uh, download some data which could add uh, in additional information to your uh, project, okay? One way or one way to do that is by uh, using the Bing streaming tool which is built in inside open roads as well as open site now how about your survey okay data i mentioned yesterday about reality models and how do you process terrain data 
let's start with survey. Okay. So with open roads, open site, okay, you can import raw field data, edit them, okay, create terrain models from it. Your raw survey data from wide selection of vendor formats is imported, okay, and processed as well as reviewed, okay, inside the software. Now you can adjust them using uh, the Open Roads uh, and Open Site Designer comprehensive survey tools. Uh, you can have some standards okay, set in order to make sure that the survey data appears in the correct uh, point uh, symbology, linear symbology. Okay, So we call that feature definition. Okay, You can do the, the editing interactively straight from the model. Okay. Another option is by using uh, a table, okay, editor that will allow you to to update as well the database from where this survey data is connected. Now, reality models, okay? So I've mentioned that uh, reality models are, are like uh, uh, a new technology, okay, uh, in the market right now wherein they process their images and create a reality meshes or 3D meshes from it, okay? Now, uh, uh, in Open Roads or Open Site Designer, you'd be able to connect to that uh, or utilize the same reality mesh and then extract a terrain model from it. Okay, you're not limited to the traditional survey data. Uh, you can also add in point cloud data. That's also one uh, one uh, possibility. Okay, so you're not really limited to to just using CAD. Okay, so the the information or the data that you can uh, you can utilize is is very robust and and, and uh, supports almost all disparate data formats. Now, how about creating your terrain model? So once you have already uh, gathered all these uh, data in, okay, survey data in, so the display or the, the software, okay, will allow you to, to use tools, okay, that uh, processes this uh, survey data into uh, probably existing ground terrain model, okay, which you can adjust or edit depending on your the project needs, okay. So like for instance, as you're seeing here, you can... Uh, change the symbology to become triangles or maybe show contours okay and then override some of the symbologies so that you can see flow arrows okay and uh, frequently displaying just probably sometimes boundary okay maybe sufficient enough especially if the the terrain model is already final okay uh, it's up to you, okay, whether you, you want it displayed as contours or maybe uh, stay it with or, or limit it into just showing the boundaries, okay? Now, once the, the terrain is final, the next step, as, as I mentioned in the earlier slide, is creating now your geometry, okay? So the the solution okay that i mentioned okay supports both your horizontal as well as your vertical geometry now creation is dynamic okay and it maintains the design intent all the time okay regardless of what edits you do like for instance here we have a a, a reality mesh at the background okay and then uh, we have some uh, horizontal uh, uh, geometry already laid out Okay. Well, what's good about the tool is that you can impose a localized standard, okay? be it your ASHTO code or maybe uh, if you're having, you have a project in Australia or even in, in uh, UK or even here in Southeast Asia, we have some localized uh, standards already built in. Okay? We call that a data set, uh, which will allow you to make sure that you impose uh, the right uh, design standards for your uh, geometries. This is both for horizontal as well as vertical. Now, once you have already created your geometry, 
Okay, we now proceed on to corridor modeling, which basically is the heart and soul of the software for you to deliver an information model. Okay, so the core civil modeling tool is basically corridor modeling. Okay, it is dynamic and intelligent. Okay, as you will be seeing here in, in the demonstration that I am uh, showing to you. So roadway corridors are modeled by pushing what we call a template okay, along the geometric path that you have designed. The result is a 3D model containing components of each project assets, such as pavements uh, or pavement surfaces, aggregate surfaces, curves, and footpaths. So these are uh, an information model okay, built in already okay, in the software as you model it. And then later on, I'll show you how you can extract component quantities out of this corridor model that you arrived at. Now, I've mentioned about the terminology template. So this is basically the cross-section okay, that the corridor modeling tool uses in order for you to create that 3D information model of your road. Okay? Now, this tool, okay, all you need to do is basically set them up okay, by creating, uh, it would start from points, Okay, so these points will be constrained, okay, according to the behavior that you want them. So probably these points represent center line of the road, the edges of pavement, uh, curb uh, or gutter uh, point, okay, maybe a starting point of uh, a sidewalk, and also end conditions that will facilitate the cutting or filling in of the, the ground or existing ground. Uh, it is very flexible. It's you can also introduce benching, okay? You can also introduce walls, okay? And uh, this this template is, is very parametric in, in uh, it would depend on how you want, okay, or the behavior of the template that you want. So it could be possible that you're only using one template all throughout your corridor model. Now, moving on to some of the corridor modeling techniques and, uh, of course, invoking uh, design standards, we have uh, this uh, super elevation. Of course, you can add them in inside uh, your roadway model to make it really, uh, uh, I mean, to, to embed, okay, a good information about how uh, the road should be designed, okay, and taking into consideration the speed of the, the car or the vehicle that will run through that particular uh, road or highway that you have designed, okay. So it, it's flexible in such a manner that you can assign multiple speed assignments, okay, through the, the road. And then uh, remember that points that are in your templates. So those points can represent super elevation points that will allow the software to calculate the super elevation okay, uh, properly and making sure the, there's enough transition length as well as a specified or following the specified speed that you have assigned to your uh, corridor model. Okay. Again, this can be localized, okay, according to your uh, country uh, standards. Okay, and then you can edit them, okay, using uh, this graphical view that you're seeing. And it's also possible that you can edit them by using a table and then create or generate reports out of that super elevation calculation that you did. Now we have so many uh, 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 editing techniques that you can use using Open Roads uh, Designer. Okay, one of them is how you use the parametric constraint. Okay, basically sometimes, right? Uh, it's not all the time that that the template or the cross section would be uniform. There are some points along the corridor or along the highway that you have to make sure that it adapts maybe to existing ground conditions or uh, 
the, the design scenario that you are uh, that you need to deliver. So, like for instance, here we are changing the 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 drop, okay, or the level of the curb, okay, to make sure that maybe at this this uh, side of the road we need uh, a crossing of a rail or maybe a, a pedestrian crossing, okay. Now to to make sure that you you adapt to this kind of existing or design scenario, we have the parametric constraint to facilitate that kind of uh, uh, design scenario. And there are a lot more, okay? So our time is not enough for us to discuss all these uh, editing or corridor modeling techniques. But one good tool okay that i want you to 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 see is what we call the civil cell okay um in microstation and almost all benti uh so softwares we have this terminology called cell okay which is basically block okay in the other software so we have uh this uh, uh technology called civil cell uh which allows you to to get uh uh, a library or a cell that you more or less like drag and drop into the model and then create okay an automatic 3d model of your road okay so in this example here it's modeling a roundabout using several civil cells to define the center the approaches okay including the the splitter islands as well as the foot path ramp, ramps, okay? So the civil cell conform to the geometry of the placement, okay, scenario following any tangents or maybe arcs and spirals that may exist in your location. The other rules within the civil cell, such as probably lane widths, radii, and length can be adjusted to meet the needs of this placement location. Okay, and then it works together with your templates. Okay, uh, you can uh, create or add in additional templates uh, on the edges of the, the corridor that is, is being created here so that uh, it can facilitate a, re a more realistic uh, cut or fill okay, on the existing ground. So as you can see here, uh, and adjust maybe the, the width of the approach lane, okay? And uh, as you do it in 2D, it basically updates it in the 3D model as well. And uh, this civil cell, okay, is saved in the library, okay? All you need to do is just set them up uh, one time, and then you can reuse and recycle them in any projects that would probably have the same or would probably use the same uh, type of road. And uh, we also have uh, some built-in civil cell already, okay, which you can explore and probably edit so that you can reuse them according to your project uh, requirements. Okay. So again, the, the, the template the case is working together with, with this tool, okay? And uh, basically making sure that every aspect of your design is uh, taken care of. Now let's proceed with the site, okay? Or site design or site model. So the site modeling tool inside Open Roads as well as Open Site Designer okay, we could allow you to create commercial as well as residential development, okay, as, and then parking lots, and then create an optimized grading later on. Now, in this video here that I'm showing, I will show you a, a mixed uh, commercial as well as residential type of uh, development, okay? Uh, laying out first maybe uh, the parking lot and then the building pad, 
Now, the building pad is uh, dependent on the geometry of the, or, or both of them are interdependent to each other. So if the building pad uh, is adjusted, the parking lot geometries as well are, adjust, uh, are automatically adjust or updates. Okay, and then uh, by using some driveway tools, you'd be able to lay out those uh, uh, connecting roads that will connect from the main road to your uh, site, uh, site. Okay, and then apart from this, okay, so once probably you've done your your uh, commercial uh, development, okay, now we move on to your residential uh, area. Okay, you can define property boundaries by using the parceling tool. Okay, this could be the general uh, project area. Okay, of your uh, residential uh, development project. Okay, and then from it, it has a, a, a rule-based settings that will allow you to to set what what is the setback distance. Uh, also, if there's there's so happen to be a building pad that will be placed, okay, and so on. Then uh, from here, uh, an automatic or creation of the street layout, okay, once you have already decided where the direction of the, the main road is, it will automatically generate, okay, the parcels, okay, according to the rule that you have set, okay, when a parceling command is used. Okay, and from it, you can just geometrically adjust this uh, uh, center line of the road, and then your parcel will dynamically adjust as well. So as you are seeing here, so I'm just modifying some of the center line, okay, maybe adding some, some knuckles as well, just to make sure that the driveway, okay, along that curve part, okay, will be uh, properly or will be uh, optimized according to probably uh, the local standard in that particular area. Okay, then once you're finished with your parcel, okay, with your parcel, the software would allow you to, to do uh, a calculation by using the grading optimizer tool, okay. Uh, this allows you to automate or the software optimizes, okay, the cut or the fill or the earthworks, okay, and then uh, it, it sets it in, in, in a manner that based on the standard that you have set, okay, it will calculate also the quantities as well as the costing of your site design project. Now, I've mentioned about uh, your, your residential uh, lot, okay, and, and the parking lot uh, capability, just to reiterate on how fast you can create parking lots, because this is one of the challenges when we have a, a site site uh, project, especially those uh, in commercial areas. So it's it's hard to to create those uh, uh, linear geometry that would represent the 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 parking lots that we have, including the grading that we we need to 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 calculate later on okay so with this parking lot tool it allows you to easily uh set okay uh the width or the length of the, the parking slot that is needed if it needs some islands okay or if a driveway has to go through that particular parking lot you also can update them or adjust the properties uh, accordingly and then the the model will adjust uh, uh dynamically as well okay and again uh once you are done with this you you push it to to the optimizer or grading optimization tool so that it can automatically uh, calculate the the earthworks that are needed in your uh project with the costing as i've mentioned Now, with the corridor modeling, okay, as well as the site design tools, uh, there are so many things that you can uh, uh, do, okay, in order for you to further interrogate and make sure that your design is is, is good, okay, and uh, optimized according to the uh, standards or rules that you need to follow, 
Okay, so what uh, I'm, I'm showing here is basically just uh, probably adding some other uh, aspects of the design, like the drainage, okay, how you see them in the plan. And notice how it's being referenced or federated from another file, okay? So it's not actually on the same file. We have a master model and then we, we reference the drainage model so that we can uh, basically display it okay, alongside our main uh, corridor. And then seeing them in, in the plan, which you see on your upper right or upper left corner, and then the 3D on your upper right, and then the long section or the profile on the lower left, and then uh, the cross section on your lower right uh, window, okay, which also extracts okay, the cross section of the drainage or the utilities network that you have actually attached. Okay, now we will delve on the utilities, okay, collaboration later in our part three session, okay, and we'll, we'll uh, discuss more about this uh, in that uh, particular session. So I'm just showing you how you can further federate, okay, other disciplines in your site as well as your uh, corridor uh, design. Now, sometimes or most of the time, our bosses would only look at the final model or the visualization, okay? So in this case, uh, 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 the old workflow is when you're doing visualization, okay, you, you pass on the, the file to the to the graphic artist, okay, <laughs> in your team, and then he will do what? Uh, uh, editing or makeup, okay, uh, to the model, okay. But since our our uh, I mean our model is is more or less like a design time visualization uh, as it is, okay. All you need to do is just click a push of a button to make sure that uh, this same okay information model is taken to the visualization engine or our tool, which is uh, Lumen RT. But open roads or open site in itself, if you want to scrutinize the, the, the model, there are some microstation built-in tool that will allow you to do driveway or walkthrough or fly through. It's just that with Lumen RT, okay, uh, it adds in more realistic visualization, okay, uh, do uh, or adding some traffic simulation as well, okay. Uh, along your your highway, okay, or along the roads that you have designed, it has some uh, uh, built-in uh, libraries of common types of vehicles in the market right now, okay. And then from it, create a traffic pattern, which you can do uh, in in seconds. Actually, you don't need to be a, a very good graphic designer in order for you to come up with uh, a nice visualization in Lumen RT. It is very, very simple. And uh, you as probably a designer or an engineer can easily use it. So there's no no uh, divide anymore as to you being the, the, the designer as well as another person being the, the graphic artist. You can add uh, vehicles or trains, trucks, okay? even add in uh, night scenes wherein those uh, lampposts or even the, the car uh, headlights have its uh, lumens property that uh, basically would lit up if the scene is nighttime, okay? And then uh, you can also uh, add in those other civil furnitures that you need to, to add to your civil design in order to make sure that it's realistic. Now it's VR, okay, ready. You can use a VR panora panoramic output in order for you to use your, you know, your VR, uh, in, uh, VR devices like your Oculus Rift and so on. And output them into uh, an AVI or an MP4 or uh, a still images as is required. Okay. Now, yes, you've done your visualization, but this is not where you should stop, okay? Because most of the time, you need to get more information from the model that you have created. So how, how do we do that? 
okay? So take note, okay, that the model that you are creating, okay, can have or must have an asset information embedded as well to make sure that this model, okay, really has that information that is needed for it to be taken to the other phases of the asset life cycle, maybe construction and also in the operations as well as in maintenance. Now, with Open Roads as well as Open Site Designer, you have this uh, tool called Asset Information or Asset uh, Information Tool that will allow you to, to add in those uh, uh, realistic uh, properties okay, to your civil objects. Okay, uh, you can customize this. Like for instance, the curb, like you're seeing here, the curb has to have uh, some uh, realistic properties, like maybe it's a uh, description, and then what uh, road name is it part of, in which chainage or station along the alignment is it uh, included, okay? And then what type of curb it is, Okay, so all this information you can embed, okay, this is just one example, I'm just using a curb as well as a gutter as an example, but you can uh, also uh, embed this asset information to maybe your light post, your drainage, okay, uh, and so on. And then from it, as soon as you have attached this information, uh, data or properties or attributes, you can show them as a table, okay, as a table in, the, in your model, or maybe export them as a report in, in probably an Excel format or uh, a CSV format as, as you would uh, require, okay? So... Uh, an information or a, a 3D model is, is just useless if it's not or if there's no information embedded to it. So this is where uh, the software basically allows you to make sure that uh, an information is also uh, taken okay, or extracted from the 3D model that you have uh, created. Now, apart from this, uh, a good information model uh, should be able to allow you to do analysis. So pertaining to road, okay, there are many important safety as well as regular, regular, regulatory aspects that the Open Roads 3D model can assist with. So Open Roads Designer has visibility assessment uh, tool for you to be able to have or take care of the safety critical criteria like stopping, overtaking uh, of the 3D model okay, that draws uh, a user-definable standards to clearly assess and investigate as well as report, okay? Get a report from the model for maybe uh, visibility deficiencies that needs corrective action. Having a higher quality 3D model extends to more advances of safety analytics that are very important in, in our design uh, practice. There's also the aquaplaning tool, okay, which uh, actually occurs when uh, tires don't grip the road uh, well. And one cause of this is because of the water surface that is uh, probably uh, your, your road design is exposed to. And you have to make sure which areas are problematic areas uh, and, and identify them at the design phase, okay, rather than identifying them in the operations phase. Okay. Now, another BIM deliverables that uh, you might be required to are your volumes, okay? So your volumes, um, earthworks are computed, okay? Uh, are computed using references. Again, as I mentioned, uh, leverage on the federated uh, approach for everything that contributes to the model, including corridors, terrain models, site models, and 3D graphics. You can even br bring in graphics or terrain uh, from other vendors as well. So the, regardless of what format that, that can be used as a, as a as uh, for you to be able to compute for volumes. And then 
Uh, another, uh, there's so many ways for you to, to arrive at earthwork calculations or volume calculations. You can do it in a manner that depends on the construction phases, okay? And maybe uh, also depending on the components as well as quantities, okay? And, and probably that uh, mass hole diagram that most of us uh, need to, to uh, deliver or create. So as you can see here, we started from a blank file. And then using the federated uh, approach, we reference our uh, corridor model, our terrain model, other 3D graphics that are needed, okay, our site design as well, okay, for us to be able to, to compute for the quantities, okay? So it, it doesn't need for everything to reside in the file. So that if you notice, again, I am reiterating, we are doing federation of the files or referencing of the files. And uh, even though it's it's being referenced, everything will be uh, considered in our earthwork calculation. So as is seen here in this uh, video that I'm showing, so the, the the manner as to how it will be calculated is pretty much straightforward as long as the the file or the information needed is is shown. So the final calculation would be seen here graphically. Okay, red for cut, blue for fill, or either way, depending on your symbology or your standard. Then you can output the, this into a report okay, for the entire project. Uh, I mean, for the report pro purposes of your entire project. Okay, and um, yeah. So this report that you output, okay, uh, the format can be customized, okay, but we already have some built-in uh, format inside the, the software. So as you can see here, there's this cut and fill, the overall cut and fill uh, calculation, and then also taking care of the components or the quantities that are in your corridor payments, okay? Now, uh, if, if, if it so happened that you need to, to portion okay, your calculation, your earthwork calculation, you can create or, or set what we call uh, a name boundary okay, to isolate your, your uh, project area into stages. So in this example here, the stage one, stage two, stage three. Okay? Now, uh, this could replicate maybe or simulate uh, projects that has different contractors, okay? Uh, or maybe uh, different phases of the project, okay? And then uh, by, by using this uh, name boundary, you'd be able to, to isolate as well your calculation as well as your reports according to this boundary or phases that you have uh, created, okay? So we're generating now the calculation of the earthworks based on the, the boundaries that were previously set. Okay, and then as you can see here, so notice in the report, there's this uh, stage two, okay, it itemizes it as stage two, then it has its total volume cut and volume fill, and then all the other components of the road are also presented, okay. Uh, the, the naming of these uh, materials are based on your templates, okay? Now you're seeing stage three, okay? With its, uh, again, overall uh, quantities as well as uh, components. Okay, now one important or one of the most important uh, deliverables maybe that is still is uh, required nowadays are your sheets, okay? Example, your plan and profile as, and then your cross-section sheets. So how do you create them and manage them inside uh, our uh, civil software? Because even though our 3D, okay, you are required to deliver a 3D with an information uh, embedded inside, uh, most of the time we are still required to deliver 2D sheets, okay? But how, how do we do that inside the solution? Now again, uh, 
using referencing or leveraging on the connected data environment, we reference uh, the models that we have created in an empty or a master file that would solely be used for this uh, sheet creation, okay? And then uh, from it, uh, we'll go through the drawing production wherein you first probably create the plan, okay? And then the profile. Now, what you're seeing right now is defining, okay, again, what we call the name boundary. The, the name boundary ter terminology is also used in the sheet creation. So define, okay, which alignment or which direction or which corridor you're going to use for, for you to be able to compute for the art to, to generate the sheets, okay. Uh, there are so many ways as to how you can generate them. Uh, there could be overlapping between sheets, okay. If, in, if there is a sharp curve along your corridor, you, you can also uh, probably shorten the, the or, or uh, make the, the name boundary uh, smaller, okay, in this area. To, to make sure that your your curb uh, corridor or the curb area in your corridor are are properly displayed in your sheet model okay so once you have identified this okay maybe uh, you you uh, set the scale okay and then the left or right offset with respect to your center line okay and then uh, after that okay after that create also the the the, the profile uh, or consider the profile model to make sure that maybe the the sheet that you need to display has uh, the plan on top and then the the profile uh, below okay so using the same group of plan boundaries that you have created you'll generate now uh, the sh the profile boundary okay so so that uh, every every corresponding boundary that is in the plan, there's also its corresponding vertical or profile uh, sheet. Okay, so once this is set, of course, considering all your uh, scale or maybe vertical exaggeration, uh, you now generate, okay, the plan as well as the profile sheet by uh, using this uh, name boundary tool, okay, and then if you need to further uh, maybe uh, change some of the, the settings like annotation group or maybe add them in what we call a sheet index, okay, to properly organize them later on because this could generate uh, uh, a lot of plan and profile sheet uh, depending on the length or the scale of the, the sheet model that you are creating. Now, uh, we've, we've uh, accelerated the video quite a bit, but the process actually took around three and a half minutes uh, for it to be generated. So as you can see here, the profile or the long sections are labeled automatically, okay? Now, you can have frames or data bands below depending on the, on the, on the standards that you will be using or the style settings that you will be using. Okay. Now, in any cases that you need to adjust, maybe the clipping that is shown in your sheet, okay, to make sure that the plan really shows the entire corridor. Okay, you don't need to regenerate, okay, the the entire sheet model. All you need to do is just focus on that particular boundary. Okay, adjust it a little bit. Okay, and since these are all dynamically linked to your drawing as well as your sheet model, your sheet would basically show uh, a, a, a good result already considering the, the right uh, sheet cutting, okay, or the boundary of the sheets that you have. Now, there's this another problematic area along the corridor. So, the same process is being done, okay, moving to that area where the northern part of the, the plan is not being showed properly. So we click on that name boundary, adjust it again a little bit, and then
view the result in your sheet model. There, okay. There you go. Now, anytime, okay, you, you need to, to adjust maybe if there's an overlap between your title block, okay? So these are references, okay? These are the references in your sheet model. So all you need to do is just manually drag them so that you can adjust them uh, in order for them to be arranged properly. Okay. This is what's good about uh, Open Roads Designer as well as the uh, Open Site Designer because it's basically using a microstation as the CAD engine. Okay, so if you're uh, already a microstation user, it's easier for you to understand how uh, the 2D, 3D model as well as the drawing model and how it relates to our sheet model. Okay. And then uh, anytime you wish to add additional uh, annotation to your plan, okay, uh, you, you can do so by, by just adding them in and then your, your sheet will also be updated. Okay. Okay. So same principle, okay, if, if we are going to talk about the cross-section Okay, um, you'd also be able to, to create the cross-section sheets by using the same tool, okay? Uh, we'll go through that uh, particular uh, stage in a while, okay? So again, create a master model, referencing all your models, okay? And then go through the process of creating the cross-section uh, name boundary, Okay. Uh, define the interval that you would like, okay, along the alignment, okay, maybe every 10, every 20 meters along the, the alignment. Define the start station, define the end station or the stop station, and then uh, <clears throat> Also define some uh, clearances or vertical exaggeration that you need to consider, okay? And then uh, there, okay? So the, the process is almost similar. It's just that it dynamically cuts along your corridor so that you, you can see them as one sheet model, okay? So your sheet is not limited to just showing one sheet a uh, one cross section in one sheet. So it could also create or generate multiple, okay, multiple sheet models depending on uh, what you or what is the standard, okay, in, in your organization. Okay, so let me just go through uh, because uh, I think in the essence of time, okay, uh, up until it generates the, the sheet model, then I will proceed to the uh, next uh, topic. Okay, so this will now create the section drawings. Okay. By the way, all this uh, style or the settings okay, can be customized. Okay? You can add your own title blocks, even your own annotation styles. Okay? Uh, it, it's, it's just pretty much straightforward. So this is one example of how it generates the, the cross-section, uh, which basically this at this point, this example is showing you the cross-section of the roundabout area of the, the corridor and then we have the cross section of the road model okay um, with all those important annotations or, or information that is shown at uh, the bottom of the sheet and so on okay now all of these sheets can be organized in the sheet index which you see on the left side of the screen okay uh, in the explorer so this would allow you to organize them no matter how many or how uh, how uh, how many sheets you are creating okay so this will be done by by the the, the sheet management tool which is called the project uh, uh, 
sheet index sorry the sheet index so it can be uh, interacted in in such a way that uh, the name of your sheets can be uh, automatically linked to the title blocks of your sheets and so on now moving on to other uh, bim deliverables okay so in 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 most of our workflow we are asked to deliver according to a format that is accepted by the industry. So that is why uh, we have uh, formats like Land XML, or maybe you can preserve it as, as plain DGN. By the way, the format of open roads and open site is DGN because it's MicroStation uh, based. And maybe you are asked to deliver them in DWG or if it's uh, according to some BIM standards, maybe uh, in IFC format, Okay, then we have this new, uh, we have this optimized uh, uh, file format called iModel, which I will discuss later on. Now let's first move on to LAN XML. So if you are required to output your design into LAN XML, uh, because probably another software needs to explore what you have created, okay, or, or uh uh, another part of the team or, or a stakeholder is using another software. So this is where you can output your geometry as well as your, your terrain into that XML format. Okay, so you can do that straightforward inside uh, our civil design software. Now, if in cases that you have to deliver them in the third party format, which is DWG, okay, then it's also possible, okay? Now, we would be glad if it would stay in DGN format, okay? But that is not the scenario all the time, okay? Now, in, in cases that you have to deliver them in IFC format, okay? That I, I have to skip on the, the, the video that I want to see to show for, for the essence of, of time, okay? So, I'll just proceed with the IFC alignment now. But the video on, only just shows you how to export them or the, the objects in your uh, model can be outputted into different formats, okay? Now, the IFC, okay, is, is also supported, but since IFC has been developed for the building aspect of uh, information modeling, so at the IFC for civil de definitions are still is a work in progress. So uh, we are still waiting uh, for further development so that we can uh, further improve our IFC deliverables specifically for civil. So ORD or Open Roads Designer, even Open Site Designer, currently supports uh, exporting your model or your uh, your uh, your uh, alignment okay, to IFC. And you can also output them, okay, the corridor itself into an IFC format. So by using the export to IFC uh, functionality of the software, okay. Now the, the process is, is being shown here in this uh, quick video that I am showing. So uh, a finished corridor model, okay, but then uh, you are asked to deliver them in the IFC format. So we have this export, okay, to IFC tool or IFC format, sorry. And then uh, once you have them exported, okay, once you have them exported, uh, you can probably use other softwares uh, to view them. And if you would look and scrutinize it, you see that it, it basically uh, uh, converts that, that model into IFC, taking some of the important civil information together with it. Now, um, uh, another format that uh, you can explore uh, on on uh, on your BIM deliverables is the the I model format or the I or the dot I DGN format. But what is an I model? Okay, so an I model is basically as an information uh, exchange format that allows uh, projects. Uh, or uh, supports a uh, project association within the full life cycle of the project, okay? It's actually an all-in-one package and includes the references, even if there's nesting or, or the, the, the level of the, the references are, are very uh, deep, okay? You can include all the cells or even the fonts that are, are linked to it, 
okay and you can also uh, this this format allows you to to open the file or the model also in some uh, supported uh, mobile apps okay now the civil uh, there's also a civil eye model okay that embeds the the civil metadata inside okay by by using ord or open site when you export the da uh, it into an i model version okay the i model version uh, i model file is basically uh, an, uh, a database okay so if you want to extract information in in an Excel format on a database format that's also possible by using the iModel ODBC driver, okay? And then, of course, the, the usual uh, 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 mode of, of usage of iModel before, okay, is by using it for design review or class uh, detection, okay, by using our uh, old uh, software called Bentley Navigator. Now, be before I cap up, I have like I think five more uh, slides to <laughs> to to show. So I'm I'm sorry if it's a bit uh, too long this time, <laughs> okay? But uh, we we saw an evolution of how uh, data or design is being taken, okay, from CAD, okay. Then you saw a while ago uh, BIM, okay, or an information model. But basically, this. This data, okay, that we are creating are actually digital twins. Okay, now our industry has advanced, okay, has advanced beyond BIM, okay, and for the last couple of years, Bentley Systems have been working hard at adding the missing dimension to digital twins, okay, which is uh, a context uh, dimension of context as well as dimension of of time. So that's where. Uh, we, we felt the need okay, to improve our uh, uh, digital twin deliverables okay, to support every aspect okay, of your uh, asset life cycle from planning, design, analysis, uh, construction up to operations. Okay? So although I'm not going to delve on this really deeply okay because we have uh we we can uh, discuss this in the part three okay but i just want you to uh to be introduced in the concept of uh using uh, uh your i model okay into a, a robust type of uh design review okay so we call this uh i twin design review okay which uh with a digital, this is like a digital type of design review. No more, uh, no more relying on on printouts or paper-based type of design review. Okay, you can do away with all these challenges. Okay, by using this purpose-built okay tool to support how you work. Uh, the unique 2D as well as 3D design review in environment enables. Uh, uh, or enabled by the, the digital twin, okay, design review lets you conduct uh, faster reviews on your design work in progress while minimizing uh, intermediate steps or artifacts or maybe ad hoc workarounds, okay? So it allows you to, to leverage on the cloud technology uh, to easily share design files uh, with your colleagues, to review and provide feedback as well, okay? The simplified sharing capabilities and web-based uh, model viewing make reviewing the 3D model easier and more accessible than ever. And the information that is actually embedded in the design can also be read from this uh, design review uh, platform which is basically cloud-based. Now, to give you a quick snippet of, of what is this uh, uh, digital way of reviewing your model, okay? So what you're seeing right now is the finished, okay, more or less a work-in-progress model of the, the project that I have been showing to you earlier on. So it composes of roads, also bridges, okay, also sites, okay? But reviewing them 
okay, on a paper-based banner or maybe by sending them a PDF attachment in 2D is, is not really that efficient, okay? With this digital type of design review, you are, as I said, you're leveraging on the cloud technology where you see the digital twin of your model, okay? And you can uh, measure, you can see the cross section, you can see the long section, you can even create or add comments, okay, on certain areas so that members of your team would be able to, to look at this, uh, this uh, comments and then maybe, uh, go back to the main model so that he can further improve this. And then output it back, okay, or synchronize back the model to the to the mod to the I model hub, okay, so that everyone gets in a way notified as to what changes had been done in the model itself. Okay. Now we'll be exploring more on this later on, as I've mentioned in, in part three. Okay. Now, to cap off this long uh, presentation of mine, okay, um, I, I would reiterate on uh, making sure that we understand that the information model that we are delivering is actually being connected by a, a, a technology, okay, wherein even though uh, you, you're using a uh, different, maybe different solution, okay, on some aspect of your design, or you're, you're involved in, in alignment, you're involved in, in the corridor modeling itself, or maybe subsurface utility, we are in a connected data environment to make sure that our project or information model uh, are intact and then properly uh, collaborated as well to other team members. Okay, and with that, uh, I would like to thank everyone uh, for attending this session. Okay, my email is projected on the screen just in case you have any clarification on technical uh, matters uh, regarding the presentation I did. Then anything sales or marketing related, uh, my colleague Darius Apilias and also Derek, uh, who's, who's with me in today in the presentation, uh, can address. Okay, now before we say goodbye, okay, I would like to you uh, I would like you to fill in the survey okay or the poll question and I would probably be addressing some of the questions as well I would look at the the chat box now okay so we have yeah so, yeah, so we're yes. waiting uh, yeah sorry just to chip mm -hmm. in uh, so uh, yes, we're okay. waiting for 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 the uh Q&A to be typed in so just kindly help me to fill up this uh short short poll uh, which you can find on the screen. And uh, I think what Milan presented was a, was a great presentation on how you know the connect, uh, connect, connected data environment and uh, the cloud thing are uh, 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 improving workflow in this uh, this this technology right now. So so I think um, if you'd like to contact us regarding some of the solution, etc., you know, please kindly just fill up this uh, poll. Yeah, Milan, over to you for yeah. the Q&A. Yeah. Okay. So I have this question from uh, Ms. If I'm not mistaken, Mr. Marnol Banta from Philippine uh, Reclamation. I cannot read the the entire name. Okay, can it also be presented in the standard plan with the detailing on the components of roads, quantities, and so forth? Um, yeah. Actually, yes, uh, sir. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, those sheets that I showed you can be further customized, okay? You can follow whatever title block or annotation styles that you, you have in your organization or maybe uh, as, is, as it is required by your, by your, uh, by your uh, owner, okay, or operator, okay? So that is, that is possible, sir. That is possible. Okay. So another, oops. Uh, okay. Another question. Uh, let me just read on it. Uh, okay. 
based on the sample, again, from Mr. Marnal Banta, based on the sample report of earthworks presented, can it also detail the chainage station on the affected cut and fill portion and its distances? Yes. <laughs> yes, sir. Uh, you can also do that. Okay, You can create a report per chainage okay uh of of your uh, uh your corridor okay and you can also embed that uh report uh with your cross section uh, uh sheets okay so yes it's it's possible okay then another question uh from Ma michael angelo okay ed Michael Angelo from DP, I think DPWH, right? So they, he's saying that we really need this in our department. What is the status of service? Uh, okay, uh, I think for the for DPWH, they have rolled out some of the open your open roads licenses uh, has already been procured based on our partner. We have a local partner there, uh, uh, Infrasys in in the Philippines. Uh, I think most uh, in uh, if I can recall it uh, properly, I think uh, uh, some have been already uh, procured in the main office or the HQ of DPWH. And uh, uh, we're just facing some, some challenges right now because of the pandemic. That's why we haven't really uh, uh, properly rolled it out uh, on, on your machine. Okay, But we're working together with our local partner there in order for us to, to effectively implement this uh, solution to you. Okay. Okay, uh, from Mr. Kenneth Padilla, very informative. We're going to copy. Uh, um, uh, for the copy of the presentation, we actually have an on-demand version of this, uh, which you can access uh, by using the same link as you use today to, to connect, okay? Uh, and pro probably you can just use that in order for you to to uh, to review, okay, the presentation again, okay, okay. So uh, other question. So uh, again, I would like to invite everyone that we have a part three of this uh, next week. Okay, so we will now be dealing on the multi-discipline scenario wherein we integrate your subsurface utilities, your gain data. Uh, uh, how do we do an effective uh, collaboration within the team? Okay. Um, Okay, so that's another question. As a student, can you use this software to view the buildings around the terrain so that you can visualize the surrounding? Yes, yes, of course. As I mentioned uh, earlier on, as long as everything are geo-coordinated or properly located uh, with its correct X, Y, Z, and then you reference it inside open rows, it should appear in the right position. You can even cut them if you want to see them in cross-section, okay? And uh, one last thing, okay, before we wait, uh, I mean, before we I address the, the last question here, I would like to invite all of you as well, because we are uh, alongside this, this presentation or this series, we're also running the civil conference or Accelerate Civil Conference for Southeast Asia. So we have some sessions every Tuesdays and uh, Fridays, uh, 11 a.m. to 11 a.m. in the morning, and then we also have a 1:30 uh, discussion. So these discussions are more in depth into the functionalities of open roads, open site, even digital twin uh, design review, as well as some uh, drainage uh, topics and so on. Okay. Uh, Ah, okay, so it's just uh, sending his, uh, Mr. Mr. Pablo Cando is, is sending his regards. Okay, so hello everyone in the Philippines and other parts of uh, Southeast Asia and the globe as well. So we do hope to see you again uh, next week for our final session. And again, thank you for staying put. We are kind of uh, over time. <laughs> But still, uh, thank you, and uh, we hope to see you. Anything else you want to add, uh, Derek?
Uh, no, I just want to uh, say that thanks to Milan for this uh, great presentation. Uh, if there's no other question, then I think we can end this uh, uh, webinar. Yeah, thank you, guys. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye.